Hey, this is Stephanie, and today I'm making a guacamole machine. Let's go! I was born and raised in Mexico, and I eat guacamole every day. Like, sometimes three times a day every day. Like, I used to ride a bicycle in the snow in Denmark to find avocados and would travel an hour to Sweden to get tacos, but that's a story for another day. One day, while eating my second guacamole of the day, I wondered how long it takes me to make guacamole and wondered if I could save time by making a machine that makes it for me. So, I timed myself making guacamole and this is how I do it. I smash avocado, chopped tomatoes, cilantro, serrano peppers, and a little bit of onion and I mix it and that's how we make it at home. And I found it takes me 8 minutes 54 seconds to make guacamole and that's at least once a day every day. So times 365 days, that's 54 hours, 8 minutes and 30 seconds or 2 days, 6 hours, 8 minutes, 30 seconds a year making guacamole. That's a lot of time, so I'm making a guacamole robot. So what I want to do is a machine that has a knife and chops like this. The tomato is going to be here, so it has to also go like this. It's going to go like this and like this and like this. And then at the end, I'm going to need a giant knife that goes into a bowl and just sweeps all the ingredients like I do. Está bien, no? Yo les puse explique todo. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Enough explaining. Here's what happened. I wasn't sure how to do the chopping, so I started with a sweeping mechanism. Because I figured I could just copy my old French press project, but make it horizontal. Here's the design I drew. And you know, sometimes the best way to get started on something that you don't want to do, but you want to do, but you're not sure how to do it, is to start with what you already know and by copying your own work. So I got a cutting board and I cut it to fit a bowl and took all the motors from my old press. And that's it. I finished it and I took a little walk break. I made these little stands and uh, it looked like it was gonna work and I was done. I called my friend Ian to brainstorm the chopping mechanism. Or like a stamp like this? Say no more. Yeah? I said more. Ian is a mechanical engineer, an electrical engineer, computer engineer, and YouTuber, and he makes incredible things and, and actually raffles them for good causes. So go check out his channel. <laughs> Okay, back to the build. Ian sent me some really fancy drawings from our brainstorming sessions and I got to work. There was a lot of woodwork, woodworking, woodworking. It was a lot of fun to work with another engineer. Um, I'll ask him if I can share his drawings on my website um, with you. It, it worked? It worked. Chopping mechanism done. Then I realized that making holes through stainless steel is really hard. It took me about 5 hours to drill a hole through the butcher knife and I tried all kinds of bits and pressure and speed. So I took a little break from making holes, had some guacamole and moved on to the next problem which was the swivel mechanism. I felt very confident about what I learned from Ian last time and I made some drawings and I sent them to him for good measure which was a good thing because my design was a little dangerous so we modified it a little bit. I put it together, I programmed it, and I tested it with the other components, and it worked. Oh, that's cool. I mounted it to the machine and was done with a swivel mechanism. And now I realize that I'm not done with any of the mechanisms because the knives are not mounted. So the first thing I tried was cutting the handle off to see if my knives had holes in them. But no, no holes. So I cut the knives to measure them. And I asked a lot of my maker friends online about making holes through steel. And I tried everything every day for about a week until I got this little Dremel press and these bits. And after a lot of patience and a lot of days of learning how to feel the steel, I was able to make the holes. That's working! <coughs> New skill learned. The last one I made only took me about 20 minutes, so yeah, I am the master of making holsters stainless steel. What's up? I mounted the knives, I stained the machine, I contemplated life, and I was ready to program it. Okay, this is the fun part. I tested the motor separately and I just had to integrate and automate this robot machine thing that I need to name. And I made it a state machine, so it would just go on its own when I plugged it in. This is a computer that runs a script, I connected it to all the motors, I added an LED hat so the machine could draw the ingredients to tell me what ingredient goes next. I took a little Luna break. I, I kind of broke it a few times. I debugged, I fixed it, I took a walk break, I fixed it again, I took a teddy bear break, and and it was done! A 
Okay, we're gonna start the guacamole machine with ingredients for the first time. I don't know what's gonna happen. So, test one was kind of a wreck. <laughs> so here's what happened. I had programmed it to make it safe between the chops, but it was too slow. Maybe safe, but it was definitely too slow for me. The chopping was stopping early, getting stuck. And it wasn't going long enough for you to fully chop the ingredients. The good thing though was that the knife was actually mounted good enough to withstand the chop. It did come undone a little bit, but it never fell. It's great! It's great! I don't have to worry about it. And leaving the sweeping of the ingredients to the very end was a bad idea because some of the bits were extra chopped and some weren't. And I basically got onion puree in the bowl at the end, which is pretty gross. The display with the ingredients at the front was nice and it worked, but um, I just placed it in the front for you guys to see, but I couldn't see it. So maybe, yeah, that was not a great place for it to be. Overall, I think it was a successful test because I was able to see that the knife was resilient like me and I could test again. It, it just needs a little bit of calibration. And my friend Diana liked it, so that's a win. <laughs> I took a note of my results to reprogram it. And yeah, no food was wasted while making this video. It worked, but that was salad. I'm gonna change the code so that it chops and sweeps, chops and sweeps. So it's gonna chop longer per ingredient and it's gonna do one ingredient at a time instead of doing like this giant salad thing. So yeah, I'm just gonna try it. We got salad again, um, <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, I think it's this is one of those moments as as an engineer when you just need to know when to pivot. So so let's pivot. We're gonna pivot. Did I say pivot? I'm gonna pivot. So we know that the guacamole robot can chop. The sweeping mechanism works really well. It looks like a torture machine, so we have that going for us. Let's just figure out what this what this machine is for. This robot.
I think we've got a winner. And if there's anything left to say, is to follow your dreams because you never know when you're gonna end up eating pie. Bye! <laughs> Estamos hablando de hacer un dibujito, ¿cuánto? Eso fue tiempo, ¿cierto? Sí, fue mucho tiempo.